And so you'll see some background material, you'll see the kinds of things that I work with uh, at the beginning of a project and where those materials lead to. So, uh, or if you could just bring the lights down. <coughs> I, I usually like to start my programs with a, a few paintings uh, just to give you an idea of what I do. This is a, a Dutch house, a Dutch uh, farmstead um, that was built on the Papskenny Creek, uh, about <coughs> six miles south of Albany. Um, this is uh, an Iroquois um, longhouse community, a Mohawk community on the banks of the Mohawk River near Canajoharie, New York. I worked with uh, Dean Snow on this project, who is an anthropologist at SUNY Albany. And uh, this is a painting of the, uh, the entrance of the, what they call the Little River. The Hudson River is sort of out in the background, out here. Um, the man who owned this vessel uh, was uh, Eric Van Curler. Um, and then Curler had a farmstead and lived among the, the Mohawks. These are Mohawk uh, warriors coming out to investigate uh, his cargo, which was horses, uh, which was very rare for them to see. Um, the, uh, this, is a, this is a phenomenal map. Uh, one, of the, uh, one of the documentarians of the uh, late 17th, early 18th century was a, a British engineer named Wolfgang Romer. And Romer made some terrific maps. You're going to see a few of them uh, this evening. But this is a map that he made around 1700 of uh, western New York. This is where Albany is today. This is the area where uh, Syracuse is. And he traveled west along the Mohawk River. And he made some really uh, interesting notes. So if you look at details of the map, um, he not only does these little sketches of the Onondaga communities that he came across, but he also indicates the trails that he followed, including this wonderful little trip by canoe up the Seneca River. So uh, we have, there's a, and there's a great deal of information here. Um, one of the things that, uh, that I thought was particularly helpful is uh, this little cartouche that he made on the map of Indian houses. Now, this, he's, he's seen this in 1700. So um, what you're starting to notice in the architecture, look at this little shed. It's, it's almost European in design. And the roofs, although the long houses um, still have this sort of art shape. <coughs> Some of them are starting to show a much more European style uh, pitch, including a little hip and that roof. So um, this is particularly helpful because he saw this stuff and he recorded it. I did a project with Greg Sorbiti and uh, Jim Bradley about uh, 10 years ago. They had been doing archaeology of an Indian site in that part of western New York. And they come across uh, a community, an Onondaga community, and they had excavated a number of areas on the site. And they had found the post molds of, of a house and some kind of storage shed alongside the house. Um, they had done some speculative um, uh, locations and trying to determine the angles of the posts, moles that they were finding. And so I used that data and then digitally um, developed uh, the, the idea of what this uh, structure may have looked like. This is a part of a digital model. Uh, this is the digital model sort of filling in. Now, with, with Greg's project, I only took this as far as drawings. I never really got to a painting stage, but from this information, I made that drawing. Um, another, this was an incredible discovery on, well, not discovery, rediscovery on their part. Uh, the Algonquian people uh, fished using weirs, which are fish traps that they would build across a, uh, a river or a stream. And this is a very, very early uh, John 
and white uh, watercolor that shows an Indian weird. Now, this is before 1600. This is down in the area of Virginia. But these are Algonquian people, the same Algonquian people that are living all throughout the whole Hudson Valley. And you um, mean before 1700? Before, oh yeah, this, that was 1580 something. Um, so, uh, but one of the one of the fascinating uh, facets of life uh, among the Onondaga in western New York uh, was discovered by a guy named William Beauchamp. Um, oh, and this is a, this is a section of the Seneca River hmm. near Baldwin. Bill, New York, which is uh, north and west of Syracuse. Um, on this bend in the river, um, Beauchamp um, had seen, this was, he, he, he saw this in 1870. He saw a structure in the river, a stone structure, not a wooden structure, a stone structure, not unlike a Roman fish weir. Eight, over 800 feet in length. Uh, and the remarkable thing about that is there are still remnants of this that can be seen today. You can still see the shadow of what Beauchamp saw in the, uh, in the 1870s. It was a structure that looked something like this. Hmm. And uh, for a book that they were doing on the Onondaga, I made some sketches of what that might have looked like. But I think it's remarkable to think about American uh, Native people in North America, in New York State, building stone structures. Mm -hmm. um, this is a painting that I made for, also for uh, Jim Bradley. Uh, this is based on the research of Karen Hartkin and Lucianne Lavin of a community south of Albany, also on the Tascany Creek to remember the first uh, slide that I showed was a Dutch house very near this site. This is a, a wigwam and then two wee twos and the, what the Indians what came to be called the three sisters, the, the crops they, they planted, beans, corn, and squash. Hmm. Um, so some of the projects uh, start with maps. And um, I was hired by the New York State uh, Department of Parks and Recreation, their Historic Sites Bureau. Um, they were redoing the um, exhibition area at the Senate House in Kingston. And they wanted me to do um, research and develop an image of what Kingston may have looked like in the 17th century. Um, everybody knows what, the, what Kingston looks like uh, later on. The stone houses are still there around the city, but this is long before that period. So. Um, this is a map of Albany that was drawn by a, a minister named John Miller. This was drawn around uh, 1695. And it's kind of a crude map. Uh, it shows uh, uh, where Broadway in Albany is today. This would be State Street in Albany. This is where the New York State Capitol building is, and the Hudson River is out here. Miller was, uh, he wasn't really a trained cartographer. When uh, I showed you the first map that uh, Wolfgang Romer made, Romer made this beautiful map of Albany uh, around the same time, about 1695. And on Romer's map, you can see here's the Hudson River. But he also shows very detailed things like the, the streams that came through the city. He's very careful about locating the stockade around the city. Uh, this is where Broadway in Albany is today, State Street. The fort is very nicely detailed at the, uh, there at the top of the hill. Um, he was military uh, trained, he was a colonel, and um, he carefully measured things. He had tools to establish exactly where things are. This map is so accurate that you can take it and place it on Albany today and the streets line up. Wow. So we have these two examples by two different cartographers around the same time. We have Miller with this crude rendition of Albany and its streets, and we have Romer with this very, very detailed uh, and accurate map of Albany at the same time. There are some interesting similarities. Even though Miller is, doesn't have the skills that Romer has, if you look at um, the Miller Fort, he's very uh, specifically indicating that the <coughs> are pointed on three corners, 
and that one of the bastions is round. And you can see that same detail here on Romer. Three pointed bastions, and one of the bastions on the corner is round. So Miller isn't way off. Uh, he's just not as uh, technically accurate. Well, the problem with uh, Kingston is that there are maps of Kingston, but they're all later <coughs> maps. This is a map of Kingston that was on 1777. Um, the area that very early on in Kingston's history was the stockades in here. Um, this is the road that goes out to Hurley. Uh, the road to New Paltz is down there. Um, and this pond is a feature uh, that came about in the era of the Dutch. Um, this um, creek was dammed up with a, um, uh, to, op to operate a mill and produce this, uh, that pond. So that's the area of the early uh, Kingston stockade. The way Kingston got started was sort of, sort of interesting. Um, back in the mid-1600s, there was a Dutch settlement in Albany, and there was a Dutch settlement in New York City. And, um, and very, very little going on in between. There was a, a merchant in Albany named uh, Thomas Chambers. And he was, he was sort of adventurous. So on these trips that he was making up and down the Hudson River, he would occasionally uh, anchor and go ashore and investigate, see what the Indians were doing, um, uh, just see what the land was like. And he did that in Kingston. And he made his way up from the Hudson River to the Esopus Creek, and he noticed that the Indians were growing, very effectively growing uh, corn all around the creek. And he wanted to see if he could be able to kind of participate in that. So he sort of, and I say sort of because nobody really knows how this happened, purchased some land from the Esopus Indians. Um, they, um, they gave him an area to farm, and after two or three seasons, he was doing really well. And his competitors in Albany started to notice that he was doing well, and they wanted to get in on the action. So before long, a much larger group of uh, settlers comes down and they also purchase land from the Asopus so that they also can grow corn. Well, after two or three years, the Indians are scratching their head and saying, what's going on? You, you said you wanted to grow corn, you've been here you're growing corn, we let you grow corn, now it's time to go. And they said, no, you don't get it, we, we don't go, we bought the land from you, it belongs to us. Well, the Indians had no concept that they had given the land up, that it wasn't theirs anymore. And this becomes the beginning of the Sophist Wars. So the settlers now have a problem. Their livestock is being killed. Their barns are being burned. Um, they can't protect themselves. New York is a very well-established community by that time. Peter Stuyvesant is running it. Um, they petition Peter Stuyvesant. They say, you have to send us some soldiers. They have to protect us. Um, they're going to start killing us. And uh, Stuyvesant says, there's no way that I'm going to send soldiers uh, to, this, to this community that you have with farms and barns located, scattered over this large area. If you are willing to take your houses down and consolidate them, I will build a stockade and I will provide you with some protection. So that's what they do. In, in 1658, they build a stockade, they take their barns and their houses down, and they move them into the stockade. Now, the stockade didn't completely protect them, but it offered a bit more protection. So this is the time period, uh, a little bit after this, so around 1690, that I was trying to portray. Uh, the way Dutch built their houses here were pretty much the way they built their houses in the Netherlands. This is a digital model that I built of a basic H-frame uh, Dutch structure. It would start with heavy timber. Um, it would be uh, clad with uh, saplings, infilled with um, clay and reeds. 
and then uh, covered with um, uh, uh, thatch. This would be a very, very basic building. So early on in the history of New York City, Albany, and Kingston, the very earliest buildings would be something like that. So the problem when you try to depict Kingston at that time is that that wonderful, accurate survey done by Romer doesn't exist for Kingston. The only map of Kingston in that time period was done by John Miller. And you can see it's pretty crude, pretty straight. The houses are little boxes. Um, he's showing gardens uh, uh, inside the blocks. And he's laying the streets of Kingston out. This is a, his Miller's 1695 map of, of Kingston. This was redrawn uh, in the 1900s with labels on the streets. But in the redrawing of it, some of the details from the earlier one were left out. So what I had to work with was that. Uh, so what is this? What does this drawing represent? What is, what is the real look of Kingston in the 1600s? Well, the first thing that I wanted to do was take a hard look at the street pattern of Kingston. Kingston hasn't changed all that much over all this time. Some of those streets in the heart of the town are still the same. This is a, a tax map of uh, that part of uh, Kingston near the Asopus uh, Creek, and you can see the layout of all of the lots. Now, this came in handy, and I'll show you in a, in a minute how, how uh, important that turned out to be. And then I just took the, the number of houses that uh, Miller is showing on his uh, map, and I just placed them on the uh, actual layout of the streets of Kingston. <clears throat> um, then I plotted in um, the streams from the 1777 map, uh, put in the uh, Sopus uh, Creek. I worked on the terrain. Um, the um, <clears throat> mill feature here was interesting because it's written about in the documents. Um, and it's the, the mill is described. Um, and most interestingly, I think, is that it mentions that the mill is also a bridge. You can see that they're moving straw and rubbish carted across the mill dam. So I don't know exactly what that mill dam looks like, but there are examples of dams that are similar to that. So I, I think it's probably a bit more elaborate than this, but something like <coughs> this. The only remaining structure in Kingston from that time period is this building, um, which just sits uh, what would be just outside of that stockade of that time. Uh, but this is the only relic of that time. This is a 17th um, 70s uh, church that was in Kingston. The problem is this is not the first church. This is the second church in Kingston. So what was that first church like? What was the church in the Dutch era like? Well, um, I was working with uh, a historian at the New York State uh, Parks and Rec office, and he, was, he showed me this passage where it was described physically. Uh, the size of it, 45 feet by 60 feet, highly finished, windows of stained glass. He felt that this description was very much like the church that was built in Albany around the same time. So he said, study the church in Albany and see if you can find similarities. Well, so I go back to the Romer map of Albany. That's the, the Dutch church in Albany. And the interesting thing about Romer's depiction of that church is that he shows the hip roof. And he shows a little cupola in the middle of the room. This church is also depicted later in drawing. So we really know what the shape of this one looks like. So when you measure it uh, using the scale from the Romer map, it comes out to be about 40 by, by 50. The Kingston church is 45 by 60. It's very similar. So if the Kingston church was built on the same <coughs> pattern as the uh, Albany church, it's contemporary, it would have looked like that. Hmm. Which is not unlike the church that's here in the Street. So back to the, uh, the Miller map. 
And if you remember, I was saying that Miller and uh, Romer, their depictions of the Albany Fort were very similar, and, which made me think that maybe um, not all of what Miller is doing is as primitive as I, I thought when I started. That block is fascinating, this block in uh, Kingston. So just taking this as an isolated example, that's the block as it is right now in Kingston today. This is the tax map laid on that block. This is, these are the, the parcels um, that are paying taxes in that little triangulated space. I took the houses that are indicated on the Miller map and plotted them in that shape. Look at that. Isn't that wild? I mean, from all, that, all those years later, the, the parcels haven't changed hardly at all from the hmm. Miller map. Um, another curiosity about the Miller map is, I mentioned that it had been redrawn in um, the 20th century. The, um, the buildings themselves, the hatching <coughs> isn't the same. Some of the buildings have hatching that's parallel with the street, and some of the buildings have hatching that's perpendicular to the street. And I think Miller may be trying to indicate, in a kind of a graphic way, uh, which way the roof pitches go, whether the pitch is parallel with the street or perpendicular to the street. So that was something that I tried to work into the, the uh, idea. This is a later map of Kingston. This is the property that the Senate House is on. Um, this is actually the house of one of the Tenbroke uh, family. This is the building that becomes the Senate House. And this is that parcel, a survey of that parcel. 1687 is the date. Uh, the problem with it is that it's, it's also, it's not drawn very ac accurately. The numbers are accurate, but the drawing itself isn't. So I took the shape and I drew it accurately and so that it would close and it, all the, the dimensions would match. I kept the line of the street the same on both of them. <laughs> I then, uh, this is uh, the uh, developing digital model of that corner of Kingston. This is where the Senate House is today. But if you take that shape um, that came from that early survey and you lay it on that site today, it matches really well. It even includes the the uh, alley alleyway there. So, and the Senate House is almost exactly in the right spot. Hmm. So, what does the Senate House look like? This is a plan of the Senate House as it is today. Uh, the original building was very small. It occupied this space here. And originally, I thought it was just sort of like a typical Dutch house: steep roof. Um, a uh, simple window arrangement door uh, facing the street. Um, I still could I could not figure out what that cartouche meant on the on the map. It's just so peculiar. So I assumed maybe it was a wooden building. So this is the digital model that I built of the building. And then after I finished this, um, I met with um, Lois Huey. Paul Huey is an archaeologist. Lois is his wife. She's also an archaeologist. And Lois had done a dig at the Senate House some years ago, and she discovered this mass of red brick at the mm -hmm. back of the house, not so much on the sides, but in, in, at the back of the house. She couldn't dig in front of the house because it's, that's where the street is. But the Dutch built a number of buildings that had masonry on the ends and wooden infill in between. The buildings in Albany are very much like that. So, could that shape represent that style of Dutch house? Yeah. And if it may, and if it did, then that house would look more like that. Yeah. So this is what I think the original Senate house structure started out looking like. This is the digital model uh, kind of getting uh, near the end point. You can see the mill pond here. The mill was located out here. Um, this is Front Street. And this is the model uh, sort of filled in. Um, and this became the basis for the area, the bird's eye view that I did of Kingston for the Senate House. Now that painting is on exhibit in Kingston, if you're curious, you want to see it, but that's the painting. Wow. Hmm. That's the mill. There's the church. And I also 
did a couple of other uh, paintings that are smaller ones that are also in Kingston. I did this one of the Senate House building, and I did this one as if you were approaching from Hurley. So you can see that uh, Kingston is quite a town. It's got this uh, substantial structure around it. So it, it isn't just a little four corners. It's really that map, that crude map that was drawn by Romer is really representing the community.